You just started controversy. <laughs> For life, and I have the honor of doing this interview. Some of the members here are long life friends of mine, clients as well. So, I want to introduce you all to my friends, Buffalo Soldiers. Salute. Thank you all for taking this opportunity to be a part of We Ride Bike for Life. I'm going to start off with your names. Uh, my name is Chief. I'm the executive director of the Buffalo Soldiers. In our group alone, we have 19. And when, uh, and when, did, when was it uh, established? We have been established 10 years, but the Buffalo Soldiers started in 1986 with my first cousin, Bill Barbie. Okay, and um, I want to make sure that people know there's a difference. You got the soldiers and you got the troopers. The troopers are totally different than the Buffalo Soldiers. Got it. The troopers have their thing and the Buffalo Soldiers, we have ours. In this chapter here, we have a patent on our colors. Okay. And we're not an outlaw group. All right. We're strictly an MC group. Okay. Now you you mentioned outlaw. Can you give me a a, a brief description of the difference? So that well, we're not know. one percenters, or we not uh, plain outlaws. Okay. You know because most of the clubs and outlaws are known by most of the bikers. All right. Because you got some uh, social clubs that don't know and don't understand. But we are legitimate. We're Chicago, Illinois MCs. Okay. And we have a legal patent on our colors. Okay. Now you mentioned something about the difference when you say Chicago 
in Illinois, I mean, some people when they wear that on their vest, what does that mean? Illinois means that you control the state. We're Chicago, Illinois, so we don't control the state. Okay. Lake City, West, where we are from Chicago, Illinois. Okay. And that's what we're an MC club out of. Okay. What are some of the things that your club has done that um, you all are known for? Well, this club of Chapter 3, we put on rodeos, horse rodeos, and we put on dinners and things at this club. Okay. Um, and we make donations to the, uh, what club do we go to? What place do we go to on uh, King Veterans Center, to the Veterans Center, the Homeless Veterans Center. We went okay. to the Homeless Veterans Center and we took food and money. And okay. And, and we're going to do it this year, maybe twice this year. Okay. Any individuals in the club veterans? Yes. A lot of veterans. Okay. <laughs> All right. Because we do know that a lot of the, um, the, the, um, a lot of the clubs have a, uh, they all come from the service. They all done some type of service for the country and a lot of the history of the bikers come from the veterans. So um, what are some of the things that, and I really wanted to focus on that as well, what are some of the things that you see with the veterans that really need to uh, be paid attention to? Because now, you know, with everything that's going on, especially with the elections and everything, a lot of the veterans are not being taken care well, of. Basically, the veterans need some money because a lot of uh, had problems of being in Vietnam and different places and uh, they're just a little disorientated which is understood by what they've been through and uh, we believe in taking them food and money and most of the clubs that do the deal with veterans do that likewise because on King Drive they needed some money to do a concrete floor yes. and uh, I'm talking to Walsh and McHugh and Patchett, the major contractors to try to get some money together to pour the floor up on 51st of King Drive. Okay. You know, I don't know, how many they sleep in that building? I think it was 14 at the time. They had 14 at that time, but we do what we can to uh, groups and we donate our own money and time. Okay. You have, uh, you have women in your club? No, we don't. Okay. Uh, strictly MC? No, we don't. We can, we, women can join our club. We've had some women, but you know, they, uh, they don't ride the way we ride, and some women don't like to have a lot of men who don't pay them attention. Okay. So, you know, we all love them, but we can't cater to their needs. Okay. Uh, any, uh, any advice for anybody who wants to be a part of your club um, or any other club? Any advice that you all would suggest for them to uh, look up, follow for uh, proper instruction? <laughs> Well, they can join the uh, Bills Unit, which is on the 103rd, uh, 110th place in Michigan. Okay. Okay, that's the CEO, and I'm just the executive director. Okay. Okay, but uh, we'll take on people, as long as they got a bike, that's 650 or better. Okay. You know, and know how to ride and have a permit or license. Okay. And basically, if people join, they got a year to get uh, a motorcycle, or a year to get their license. Got it. Okay. That's where it basically goes. Any biker stories? <laughs> Hi, I'm King Kong Icky, the Chapter 3 Chaplain. I'm also a great grandson of Major George W. Ford of the okay. Calvary, of the original Buffalo Soldiers. My granddad went, great granddad went from slavery to a major in the United States Army. Now, I'd also like to talk about our patented colors. Our original colors were actually colors of the United States Army. And uh, those colors right now are, are still active and they're uh, presently at Fort Riley, Kansas. Okay. Eventually they're gonna take them to Fort Huachuca, New Mexico. So those, our original colors when I joined were active military colors. Okay. And uh, Chief, because of uh, disagreement with some other Buffalo soldier, chief decided we should have something that more represented us. And that's okay. how this uh, color came about. Got it. Um, I like to ride international. I, I've ridden uh, California four different times, different years. Uh, I've shipped my bike overseas and I've ridden France, Italy, Spain, then back to France. Okay. Uh, this year I'm going to Portugal, Spain, Morocco, Belgium, France, then back home. Okay, okay. So, so we're right. So I'm glad you. I'm glad you mentioned the fact that these are your colors are still active. Yes. Okay, okay. And um, 
He said, you, you have a, he said, your grandfather. He said, your grandfather? Great, great, great grandfather. Okay. Was so it definitely got to get a picture. Got to get a picture, man. Yes. He was uh, an actual Buffalo soldier. He fought with Teddy Roosevelt in the uh, Philippines, Cuba. Um, uh, uh, they went down to Mexico. I, I forget what that war was called, but they went down to Mexico and fought. Uh, he's been out west as well as out east. Buffalo soldiers were out east as well as out west. Okay. They, they, they just weren't out west. Okay. Uh, what he did in the Civil War, I don't know. Okay. That's a lot. That's some serious history right there. My great uncle also was a Buffalo soldier. Was that my great uncle? Okay. That's Bill Barbie's grandfather, my cousin. Okay. He's. Uh, we have a newspaper clipping out of the Defender. Is that out of the Defender? Yes, it's all the Defender. It's an article out of the Defender on him. That's Bill's great grandfather, my great uncle. Okay. And Bill's a big dude because he used to train me. So. Yeah, I'm the shortest man in the family. I'm six two. <laughs> okay. So, um, any future events you all got going on? We have several things. We're gonna have a rodeo for horses here, and we have some uh, club events we're gonna have. Okay. So make sure we keep up the dates and everything. Um, all right, guys. So you know, I'm gonna ask this question: um, Harley's, Hondas. Which y'all prefer? Harley. Uh, Harley. Harley. Okay. And that is. Man, I ride an old goosey. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs>
we are always one. Indeed. In two. Love you, God. Thank you, babe. Absolutely. Here's some facts about the Buffalo Soldiers. Originally, they were known as members of the U.S. 10th Cavalry Regiment of the United States Army, formed on September 21, 1866, at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. The nickname was given to the Negro Cavalry by the Native American tribe they fought in the Indian Wars. Although several African American regiments were raised during the Civil War as part of the Union Army, including the 54th Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry and the many United States Colored Troop Regiments, the Buffalo Soldiers were established by Congress as the first peacetime all-black regiment in the regular U.S. Army. Okay, so um, any future events you all got going on? We have several things. We might have a rodeo for horses here. We have some uh, club events we're going to have. Okay, so make sure we keep up the dates and everything. Um, all right, guys, so you know I'm going to ask this question. Um, Harleys, Hondas, what y'all prefer? Harley. Uh, Harley. Harley. Okay, and that is? Man, I ride a motor goosey. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's 650 or better. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay. You can keep up. Okay. Um, I prefer Harley because I won that from Chief in the Dice Game. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Um, I'll take it. I'll take it. You guys, um, um, I noticed I saw you all had a chapter in Hawaii, if I'm not mistaken. No, those are Buffalo Troopers. Those are Troopers? Those are okay. Troopers. That's why I want to make sure to know the difference because a lot of people may not know the difference. Okay. Well, the difference is the Troopers are a lot of police from state Troopers and so forth, which is a good group. And they used to be with Bill. But see, what happened was they went to court and Bill let them become troopers and he stayed Buffalo soldiers. Got it. Because they started off as soldiers. Got it. They went from soldiers to troopers, but we are still soldiers. Got it. You know, no harm done, but it happened and it happened. All right. And all in all, still family. Yes, yeah, still family. Okay. Okay. Um, any other words you all may have? I can always pop a question. Well, we got a president here, vice president here, treasurer here, secretary. Yeah. They have some questions. Springfield so Neal here, um, president, um, serving with these guys here for the last couple of years. All professional, hardworking men. I mean, we we love to ride. We do ride. We will ride. And uh, one other thing uh, I like to say about this man's great grandfather. That's the history I grew up on, reading in school. But then when I got a chance. To Join a group that was part of that history. I was very, very honored. Okay. Very. I got a question. Another question. Um, I see you have the uh, swords, the cross swords. So the ninth and tenth cavalry. Ninth and tenth cavalry. Okay. Okay. All right. And that we can always look up online about. Okay. Okay. Ninth um, cavalry is still in existence. Tenth cavalry is not, but ninth cavalry is still in existence. Okay. World like, War II, Korean War. Right. All the black <laughs> soldiers were pretty much segregated into those two. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I invite the stories that you all may have to share when y'all was on the road. Any, uh, I'm going to give you uh, some history I just found out. Okay. I'm a retired staff sergeant out of the United States Army, 26 years. Okay. I'm also part of a group called the 8th Infantry. Okay. 8th Infantry before they before black soldiers in the United States could fight as black soldiers they fought as French soldiers awarding the French Fortage to Charlie Company of the 178 33rd Infantry but uh, a lot of the clubs uh, a lot of the names you see uh, Rough Riders Buffalo Soldiers all of those are branches out of the 8th okay. and you can find that history down at Jones Armory on 52nd and Cottage. Okay, okay, okay. That's something I did not know about. Now we know. Now we know. Jones has a very rich, a very rich history. Okay, okay. Part of the first atomic bomb was stored in there. Mm. There's still a jail cell down in the basement. Oh to wow! This day. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. Oh wow! Oh wow! 
the parts for the first atomic bomb were stored in that armory. There's a tunnel that's, that's bricked off now that led from the, from the armory over to the university. Damn. Damn. I didn't know that was so. Well, okay. Learn something new. Any more stories, anybody? Oh yeah, my first, well, how I became a, uh, a Buffalo soldier, I was already looking, you know, to get a, I was getting rid of my crotch rocket and looking to do something more. Well, my old lady pissed me off one morning, didn't want to cook. I was hungry, wanted some breakfast. So I went over to Round the Clock on Torrance, and lo and behold, there was Chief and another Buffalo soldier, and I got to talking with him. And next thing I knew, the next week I'm riding a Harley and and uh, became a member. Okay. Well, my first real long haul was a Roundup last year, and everybody was uh, bitching and moaning about how they, what problems they had, but I'm the only one who broke down on a trike, who rode it all the way back. From where? From, from uh, Boom, boom Land. <laughs> rode it all the way back, leaning with a pull muscle from pushing they bikes up on trails. <laughs> so that was my first uh, real ride with the soldiers. Okay, okay. So you got your exercise on it. Oh yeah, that's what you want to call it. <laughs> Okay. Some people was in the truck. Uh, what, 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 what I've had a few other problems. Uh, I had an accident on Sibley going north, and I was cranked up at 85 miles an hour and skinned my arms up, didn't have a helmet on, and uh, I lived through that. And another one, I was a starved rock in a tree. My biggest two coffee cans kept me from dropping 150 feet down. I was at 15 miles an hour and took a pain pill, a cold capsule, and a hydrocodone and blacked out. Uh, you might know Pirate. You know Pirate? Yeah. Pirate was with us and a few more was went down to <laughs> And that happened. But God's been good to me. <laughs> wow. But I love to ride. And you ride a trike? Yes, sir. well I've had 19 surgeries. Okay. <laughs> 14 back surgeries, new knees. <laughs> Ankle, pins, <laughs> broken neck, and still second, going. third vertebrae, yeah, I'm still going. <coughs> still going. God's good to me. Yeah, we preach safety as well. Even pre-ride, we always preach safety, safety gear, bike checks, no clowning. We're a good group. Yeah, we're, we're, we're a very good group. Cohesive, I think, is the right word. At Arkansas, trip brought us together. <laughs> really? Yeah, nobody had to drive all the way to Hags after they put their bike up and they get a shot. So people home. got killed in the Arkansas mm -hmm. Roundup, and it took us 19 hours to get there. Mm. Mm. I was on my bike for 15 hours, and I had to put on a trip. I was wore out. Mm. Mm. These other guys went there 19 hours. I said, handle it, handle it, John. Yeah. Well, they could take a little younger than I am. They could deal with it. <laughs> but, when, but it was 250,000 bikers at the Arkansas Roundup. 250,000 at ten dollars a person. 2018 is supposed to be in Chicago. It's official now. Well, no, they have meetings. They're trying to have meetings to bring it to Chicago. This is going to be interesting because they were trying to do it last year. From not mistaken, a couple years ago they drive too. Uh, ten years ago they drive. I can do. I can do it several time. times. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we send a representative to try to help that along to okay. bring it to Chicago. I look forward to that. Well, one. we respect all clubs. We don't have a problem with no clubs, whether they're percenters, non percenters. You know, we treat men as men and people as people on bikes. That's where we are. Well, I got a, I got a question on that. I know you all are familiar with the show Sons of Anarchy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the stuff that people saw on that show, they actually interpreted as a lot of that. That was exactly how it was. And from there, a couple of other shows came off that were like Offsprings, which I wish they never did. But for someone that's outside that's not inside, what would you what would you say to them if they asked, well, is it like the Sons of Anarchy being in this? No. I go back to the 50s. It was a white castle at 63rd and Vernon. And that's where the iron horses were on the south side and on the west side. Okay. They all rode Harley Davis back in the 50s. And the club name was the Iron Horses. Okay. 
Now, see, I go back to 1966. That's my uh, first year riding. Um, I tried to become a, a club called the Jazzy Ones out of Robbins, Illinois. And uh, some of those guys are still alive. They're in the 80s and 90s. But some of those guys are still alive. I, I never did become a Jazzy One because I couldn't learn the protocol. And I had a little Honda. And they were riding Indians and, and uh, Harley Davidson. <laughs> okay. So to you, answer your question, no. no. It's not like it's not it's not no, 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 it's not. We all right. professional right. people. We, uh, we're, we don't make our living by being a club. In the black bike motorcycle world, is a, a lot more than what people think. We have several police officers in this club, and a lot of clubs have, several, have police officers, FBI agents, doctors, lawyers, preachers, um, contractors. contractors. <laughs> yes, uh, the black motorcycle world, you'll find that a lot of the people are family people, the uh, female clubs as well. And, and, and I hope you do some female black You got a few of them. Mm -hmm. and, and they're becoming popular. And again, you'll find a big diversity there. And, and they're educated people. You look in this group, right. several college graduates in here. We're 19 strong, most of them. Some of them left, so. Yes, but. Half of the club works with their bricklayers. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. The um, contribution to the biker community from the African-American perspective some of the things that you all may know of historically that African American bikers have given to the uh, biker community. First, first, uh, uh, what do you call it with, with the big old handlebars and uh, eight, eight? no, eight no. What, what do you call that bike? Uh, Ch chopper. Chopper. First chopper. Black man out of Oakland, California. First chopper. Uh, you look back east. I've forgotten the man's name. Every now and then they'll do an article on about I don't remember his name. He designed motorcycles for racing. Black man. Uh, had, his, had his own garage. White guys used to come to him to have their, their engines worked on. Uh, not every custom paint job, but a lot of your custom paint jobs started back west. Black people. Uh, at one point, your largest motorcycle club in the United States was a black club out of Oakland, California. Again, I don't remember the name, but I read the story about it. That was the largest motorcycle club in the United States of America. Over the years, with law enforcement harassing them and the like, people dying, things of that nature, it just fell down and fell down, and, and it's no longer in existence. Okay. But uh, black motorcycle club history is deep in this country. It was just ne never recognized because of the racism and prejudice. But we have a rich history in this country. Okay. And, and I'm glad people like you are, are making it known. Thank you. Yes, I, I am. I'm very glad. Another thing, uh, a lot of black police had to ride trikes back in the 50s. They couldn't get squad cars. Okay. They gave tickets off of trikes, Harley Davidson's. And blacks rode motorcycles during the war as messages back and forth. One of them was Bessie Springfield. Right. We talked Black about lady. that. We did talk about yes. that. Yes. Black lady. Queen. The queen. And this lady rolled all over the United States. We didn't have a, an interstate freeway then. That's right. All over. There were times where she had to sleep on her motorcycle. <laughs> you know, they write about her. And is she on a stamp yet? I think so, but there's the first uh, picture of the portrait of the first black buffalo soldier lady on that wall. Kathy oh, Weed. Okay. That's, that's a lady. That's the okay. lady over there. They didn't find out that she got, got wounded with <laughs> the medic, and that's when they found out she was a lady. Wow. Because <laughs> wow. the United States Army still tried to deny her benefits. Yes. Say that one more time. They the tried the United to... States Army denied her benefits. Because she was female. Wow. And she was an ex lady. Okay. I'm gonna take a picture of that. And then in uh, Houston, Texas, Houston, Texas is probably the best Buffalo Soldier Museum in the United States, but it's not the only museum. There are other museums featuring Buffalo Soldier history. 
and I'm trying to think of the name of this little town in Virginia, Gum Springs, Virginia. You'll, you'll find a history there. Well, you guys seem to be rich with history. Mm -hmm. Well, it's important to do a little reading, find out about your culture. <laughs> Yeah, well, as an educator, I've got lots of ideas. <laughs> I can imagine. So. I'm Kelly Mann. I'm uh, Sergeant Arms here, Chapter 3. And I guess I, I bought my first bike in 1981 in uh, California, in Oakland. Mm -hmm. And um, I was hanging with a group called the Wicked Wheels. And they all rode um, Hondas. But then you had the East Bay Dragons. They all rode Harley Davidson. And then that gen gentleman was the founder, and that was the biggest club out in the Northern Bay Area. And uh, most of those motorcyclists there, they also had horses. So when I moved back to Chicago, I took more interest back into the horses than I did the motorcycles. And uh, I've had horses for the last 25 years. And um, I had bought a uh, gold wing back in the early 90s, but I didn't keep it too long, you know, because I had a family and my responsibilities took uh, precedence over all of that. But I did stay with the horses, okay, up until about uh, seven, eight years ago. But I still didn't have a bike, so I got me another bike, which is a Harley Davidson. And the thing I like about the Harley Davidson is that buying a Harley and riding a Harley is more cultural. You know, just within the black community, but as well as the motorcycle community. Riding a Harley, you get much different respect than riding a Japanese bike. And One thing he's leaving out of this whole conversation, he rides bulls. He's a bull rider. Well, you know, I don't like to toot my own I mean, he did it professionally in rodeo. Yeah, well, me and uh, the chief here, we, we go back over 20 some odd years with rodeo. So, yes, yes, I did. But however, with the, with the MC, uh, in order for me to ride with the group, I couldn't be nothing but a Buffalo soldier. Because that's part of our heritage and that's part of my cowboy heritage. Amen. So if I can't be here, I'm not gonna ride with nobody. We were in the Buffalo Soldiers Horse Group 20 years ago. Cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna ride Buffalo Soldier. I'm gonna leave it alone. This is it for life. For life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I just like to say, uh, my name is B Mac. Uh, it's my first club. I've uh, been with the club two years now. Uh, it's a great bunch of guys here. I love riding with them, and I'm, I'm just having fun. <laughs> no story? No, no stories. Not yet. Mr. Cabo, who's this over here? Big old, John John, oh, big old. Come here, young I'm going to cut out. You know what I'm saying? And I've uh, been in the club for about four years now. And no history of so land yet. Uh, uh, pick up a yeah, little bike. The bike he was talking about go down. He doesn't have no room with the truck or his bikes. We had to ride. So <laughs> tell us, 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 we guys are talking about uh, other contributions that uh, we've brought into like the black the black bike culture. That's how CVO of Harley came into existence, custom vehicle operations. The guys from Harley flew Same like group. guys from Rare Breed and <clears throat> one down out of California that had custom the bikes and put music and wheels and stuff on. Flew them out, took pictures and things of the bikes and started putting them into mainstream. A lot of people don't know about that. Like the big motors and the chromed out engines and the braided lines, all of that came from us. Amen. Hmm. Uh, I'm John John, secretary. I'm uh, one of the, I'm the youngest member. Um, I've been in the club maybe going just about a year, maybe. Uh, I haven't had a road trip experience yet. 
and I'm looking forward to it. Great bunch of guys. Uh, that's my stepfather right there, the executive director. Um, and I'm just proud to be uh, part of this great history of uh, Buffalo Soldiers. I'm EP, I'm one of the new members. I've been, uh, been around these guys now, uh, teaching me a lot about the Buffalo Soldiers, opening my eyes to a bunch of things. And I'm looking forward to some road trips. No stories yet. Share this, if I could. Um, again, Kelly Man, Sergeant Arms, Chapter 3. As I think back to my time in Oakland and the distinction between the two clubs, East Bay Dragon and the Wicked Wheels, was Wicked Wheels riding the Hondas. But Honda at that time came out with the electronic ignition. But the Harleys at that time used to have the Kickstarter, you know, and some of those guys had both. So they said, oh, you didn't want to kick it today, so you're down here with us with the electronic start. You know, so the Japanese had that, that edge for a little while. And then eventually with the Harleys, they came with electronic starts and electric starts and uh, whatnot in the technology. But I think it's uh, the best bike out. You know, I drive American, I ride American, I work American. I am a black American. Amen. <laughs> One problem that Harley had, some of the dealers were reluctant to deal with uh, blacks going to buy bikes right. at their shops. Indiana was the worst. The salesman wouldn't talk to you if you walked through the door and stood up for 15, 20 minutes. They wouldn't come and ask you what are you in there for or nothing. It's just the way they were. But they have changed now because we buy a lot of Harleys. So they need us like everybody else needs us. Amen. And I do want to add something. A lot of people say motorcycles are dangerous and everything. Uh, I've broken my tibula and fibula on this leg. I have a plate, rods in it, and I've broken my fibula on this leg playing basketball. So I found that uh, basketball is very dangerous. So I gave it up. I gave it up. <laughs> So, you know, no hoop dreams here. I can ride, have fun with a great group of guys. Cool. John, John, yes, crank sir. it up, baby. With a star, John, John. for dancing and table and everything else. And we have 11 acres. We've had rodeos over there, 2,000 people here. And you've been active, so. See, I got that one too. You're about it again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Before women were allowed to join the military, Kathy Williams decided that she wouldn't let her gender or the color of her skin get in the way of her ambitions. She
she became the first known African-American woman in American history to join the armed forces by disguising herself as a man. Williams, born into slavery in the year 1842 in Independence, Missouri, she was a house slave for William Johnson, a planter in Jefferson City, Missouri. During the beginning of the Civil War, Williams was claimed to have been freed by Union soldiers, but was forced to work for the Federal Army as a paid cook and laundress. During her time serving in the Federal Army, she gained an insight into military life by answering directly to two Union generals, one of whom was General Philip Sheridan. At the war ending, Williams did not have the means of supporting herself, but she was able to let her newly guarded freedom get snuffed out like a flame. In November of 1866, Williams disguised herself as a man and enlisted in the U.S. Army as William Cathy. Full-on medical exams weren't mandatory at the time and Williams was able to pass a quick general health check before filing in among the ranks. She was found fit for duty and assigned to the 38th U.S. Infantry Company, a all-black regiment in St. Louis, Missouri, which eventually became a part of the renowned Buffalo Soldiers. Apparently, the two people knew her secret, a friend and a cousin, both whom served alongside with her in the same regiment. They never divulged her charade. Williams traveled with her regiment and helped protect miners and immigrants from Apache attacks at Fort Cummings, Missouri. Unfortunately, military service took its toll on Williams. She was in and out the hospital for most of her service due to neuralgia, pain caused by a pinched nerve. Surprisingly, it was six months after the first hospitalization when they found out that she was a woman. After the truth was revealed, Williams was discharged from the Army honorably on October 14, 1868. Little is known of her life after she was discharged, except for her attempts to get a pension for the disabilities that she incurred for military service. Sadly, Williams never received compensation for her medical issues. The Pension Bureau claimed her illness was pre-existing and because she was a woman, her services was not considered legal, disqualifying her from pension pay. She may not have intended to become a prominent figure in history, but one thing is for sure, Kathy Williams will forever be regarded as the first and only female Buffalo soldier to have served in the U.S. Army.